Dale. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's uh, really a pleasure to have you, Carly. Uh, well, thank you. I, you know, I went to your website, and uh, you're an author. And yeah. uh, uh, if you want to share your screen here in Zoom, it's that green button there. Gotcha. In case All right. you want to let's, show some charts. Let's get it going. Okay. Okay. All right. So before we get to the markets, Carly, mm -hmm. uh, how about the genesis? Uh, how, how the early part of your career before you got involved in the markets, what led you into this arena? Can you tell us a little um, bit about your history. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, and honestly, it's not, it's not that exciting. I literally <laughs> just stumbled into commodities and happened to enjoy it and happened to find a way to, to make it work. So that was that I started out, um, like, you know how the college process is when you're 18, you choose a career path, yeah. and, but you have no idea what you want to do at 18. So I changed my major several times. I got two degrees, one in accounting, one in finance, thought I wanted to be a stockbroker. I hated it when I did an internship and then literally just walked into some random commodity office in Vegas, which is actually very rare. Vegas has zero uh, futures trading operations yeah. or i mean like literally it was just a fluke and walked in started uh getting involved and liked it so oh uh, interesting what what was yeah. the name if you don't mind sharing sure uh so uh, the op it was aleron i don't know if you've oh, heard of aleron. okay i do remember them i had, had an a, ib had an okay. ib through them sure yeah all right okay so, yeah. we're from That's you it. know uh, same era. So gosh, you and I've seen yeah. a lot of things change, haven't we? Oh my goodness. Wow. It's career. been night and day. Yeah. But yeah. it's been mostly awesome changes. I, when I first started, I had like neck cramps from holding phones on my shoulders. Oh, yeah. Now technology <laughs> has made life so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to, um, you know, cut my teeth at the CME, yeah. the old one over okay. Union Station a long yeah. time ago. So, um, yeah, so you know, a lot of people don't they don't have that ability right now. Go to a trading floor and and yeah. rub elbows and talk about markets with uh day you know, with members sure. and yeah. day traders. So uh they need people like you. Uh and they have to be very discerning um because there's a lot of crap out there on the internet. <laughs> oh my goodness, right? there's uh, so much, yeah. All right. So um and I understand from looking at what you do, um, you're a believer in using options more than futures in commodities? I t I'm a, a firm believer that um, trading commodities is really a, it's a mind game. It's an emotional game, just like yeah. playing sports or anything like that. Right. Um, and it's the all idea in our is heads. a hundred percent. It's in our heads. I see constantly, I see people literally subscribe to the exact same signal service and one person make money and one person lose. And it's just, yeah. it's because of their mental uh, ability to handle the good times and the bad. Um, so for that reason, like my, my personality or my preference is a little slower, um, slower game. And so yeah. options tends to fit my mindset a little better. That, that doesn't mean it's for everybody. I mean, everyone has to find what makes them most comfortable because if you're most comfortable, that's when you're going to be making the best decisions. Um, I, I have found uh, one of the things I like about options is um, I could be wrong for a day or two. And right. if I'm still right, I'm there instead of my stop being elected, <clears throat> take the loss and then have to have the uh, very good psychology, which most people don't have, that uh, if you're right, the market wrong, the trade to mm -hmm. get back into that trade again. Right. So, yeah, it's a, um, getting yeah. stopped out prematurely is, is a tough game and it's hard to recover from. We try to encourage our clients. I mean, again, it's what there's no right or wrong way, whatever way works for any individual person, but we tend to encourage them if they're trading futures, um, trade on like hedge with options. Maybe for example, if you're long futures contracts, maybe sell calls above, use some of that okay. premium to buy a put that sort of thing. So we kind of encourage that type of uh, yeah. strategy, but I mean, you know, there's not so like in. Okay, so I, I, why don't we move to oil? It's uh, okay. one of the last holdouts. Uh, they finally got to uh, some of the stock indexes, the S&Ps mm -hmm. last week, and the dollar right. rallied, which pressured everything. The sure. metals got hit hard. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the crude oil market uh, was very resilient and held up during that time. So um, 
do you make uh, directional bets and options? And if you do, um, is it mainly with verticals so that you reduce the cost or just outright put and call buying? Uh, what um, would you do with crude right now, which I think is, you know, maybe a few dollars, uh, maybe there's one or two more highs left, but we're approaching mm -hmm. what was long term um, that I didn't believe, you know, long term mm -hmm. bulls uh, six months ago, we're talking 75 or so. So yeah. how are you approaching oil now? So um, oil is a is a, a tough market because it literally like it as we can see now it picks a trend and it just goes with it regardless of it seems like nothing can knock it down and then one day you wake up and it's yeah. different and it's it's different after dramatically. you turn your head and yeah. you're flat after you've right. given up trying right. to top pick it that's when it, it happens yeah. that's exactly right I mean I'm, I'm looking at today's seventy to seventy five dollar oil as probably the 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 probably the upper end of the range in fact not probably it is this is oil's kind of really since fracking came along we've really had a hard time getting above the 70s we really haven't seen that at all since we've been in the fracking world um and we're starting to get calls for actually i was just reading an article this morning of some of the bigger banks looking for a hundred dollar oil 120 okay. I'm old yeah. enough to remember when oil was at 150 and literally everyone on the planet thought it was going to 200 and mm -hmm. it didn't go to 200. It went to 35. So I feel like the bus is just way too full. If you look, I look at COT reports to yeah. see where uh, traders are positioned. We're not um, at record long positions and, you know, for speculators, but we're, we're getting up there. I think we're to the point where we're getting close to where all the buyers are already in. Everybody's already bullish. And so it's going to be hard for prices to go much higher. I think any I record, any close to record short positions by commercials. Um, I think we're in the vicinity. I don't think we're at a record. I didn't uh, off the top of my head. It, but I, it, but it's very unbalanced. Yeah. 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 It's very unbalanced. Yeah. And, and it's, okay. people start to get complacent also. Cause I mean, we've really had very little back and fill action. We had one decent correction about a month ago or so, and then it just came right back. So we we're everybody's long, everyone's complacent, and that's kind of a recipe for disaster. So I think, you know, while I can't rule out maybe a spike up, maybe even as high as 75, 76, I think, I think eventually we're going to roll over pretty hard in oil is my best guess, but we'll see how so, it goes. So uh, are you uh, implementing any option strategies? Does it involve... Um, selling, uh, you know, are, are option premiums reasonable enough to just buy puts without uh, selling some puts, uh, doing, you know, some type sure. of debit spread? So, uh, I mean, the, it's tricky because we're a brokerage and we have clients that are trading $2,000 and then we have clients that are trading millions. So it's not like a one size fits all type of idea. But what we're, what we're kind of trying to encourage is um, I'm not opposed to, to selling calls up above. And then okay. maybe if necessary, hedge later. Now that's not for everybody. That's for somebody that has a bigger account and risk tolerance and that sort of thing. But the calls are a little overpriced. So um, with strikes, you know, up in the mid to high seventies, you don't want to get too crazy with it. But uh, on the put side, we actually have like for some of our smaller accounts, we, we have uh, butterflies in place. So range Can trade. Explain, uh, uh, butterflies yeah, that were absolutely. your uh, selling calls and puts. Uh, what it is, is you're, it, you're basically buying two puts and selling two puts to pay for it. And it creates a range right. trade. So for example, I should have looked at premiums this morning, but I didn't, but let's just, I'll just kind of do a hypothetical. So okay. for example, you might be able to buy like um, a 65 put and then sell two sixty two puts somewhere in there to pay for that. Basically the idea is you're, you want to be long a put, but the 65 puts going to be really expensive. So if you buy the 65, you sell two 62s to pay for it. And then you'd buy a 59 to, to limit your risk. So that if the market just completely crashes, you have limited risk to what you pay for. Usually you can get a $3 spread like that in oil off for about five or 600, meaning the most you can lose is five, $600. You could make, the three dollar spread minus what you pay for so roughly twenty six to one yeah so now it's easy to get excited to that because the risk reward is off the charts awesome but you yeah. have to be careful with butterflies they're definitely not perfect because if you can be too right if the market 
completely falls out of bed, you were right on the direction and you still lost money on the trade. Yeah, that's aggravating. It is. It's that's frustrating. <laughs> also, you can't like you're almost trapped in the trade until expiration if you want to if you're if you're hoping to get a, a good uh profit potential on it because of the way the options are priced and like if, if the oil sells off volatility is going to go up so your two short options are going to kind of uh, yeah. be eating up a lot of the profit on long so it's not perfect but there's really not many other ways a small trader can get into crude oil with a risk of 500 and not worry about getting stopped out or any of that you just put it on and let it go okay uh very interesting uh um, any other markets that uh, you're paying attention to last week uh, and your reaction to the Fed speak last week? Uh, you know what uh, was interesting to me, Carly, is the Fed really didn't do anything, right? I, no, you know, no, they kind, didn't do it. Right. Kind no. of like, you know, uh, back in the COVID crash, uh, they talked about uh, supporting corporates, uh, corporate bonds, and they really never mm-hmm. even bought a bond. Yeah. And, until later and, and uh, they came back. So uh, right. with gold shedding and silver shedding the way it did mm-hmm. makes me think how fragile markets are that just a jawboning or how wrong footed people were that just yeah. a jawbone could have created that type of magnitude decline. Right. Um, uh, what do you think about this? You know, I've been saying that now the Fed is going to have to do something. They can't reverse course. And mm-hmm. uh, until they, uh, the sooner they do something, the better. Otherwise, it's going to hang like a cloud over the markets, kind of like right. uh, stocks, you know, that are going mm-hmm. up and then they have a great earnings report and that's right. it. And the Fed, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, sell the rumors that they're going to do something, but markets sure. could be under pressure until they actually do do something. What do you think? Um, yeah, no, I think you've, you definitely have a valid point. And I think uh, we've seen this before, like in the, during the last financial crisis where people kind of lose faith in the Fed um, because of all the smoke and mirrors. So we could be in a situation where that happens if that happens, we're probably going to see, it's probably going to be supportive for treasuries, which I know a lot of people are surprised um, that treasuries have moved higher. Honestly, we've, we've been calling for higher treasuries for quite a while. We were early. um, And, you know, so that happens and we, we took a lot of flack for it, but uh, ultimately I don't think the treasury market is, is done going up. Uh, And the reason being, there are a couple of reasons. Sometimes in treasuries, fundamentals literally doesn't matter. Like what makes sense to most people has no bearing on what treasuries might do at any, on any given day. Uh, we were in a situation where everybody was um, kind of the opposite of what we just talked about in crude oil. Like in crude yeah. oil, everyone's complacently bullish in treasuries. Everyone was complacently bearish. Any right. news station you turned on or article you read, it was, it all said the same thing. 10 year notes going to 2% and nobody literally um, even, entertain the idea that maybe something different could happen. Uh, actually, we, I was on Bloomberg a couple of, I think it was about two weeks ago. And I made, I made the statement that the 10 year note will see 1% before it sees 2%. And I got a lot of hate tweets and a lot of angry people, but as it looks like maybe that might actually turn out that way. And that's um, still going to be a higher low Carly from uh, yeah, their 0. 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5, sure. you know, and that would probably be a great shorting opportunity. I could see that yeah. 110. Yeah, um, I, I think especially right. after the market gave back all the yield that it had gained during the statement 24 hours later, it's like the Fed didn't say <laughs> yeah. anything, right? Right. Yeah, it's it's been a... Oh. It's just been a wild ride the last couple of weeks and not necessarily a good ride either, but it's been, it's been wild. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think that around the 1% area is probably about the lowest we might see, but we'll, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but again, the, the bottom line was everybody was short. Nobody right. thought the other, the opposite could happen and just kind of caught people off guard. Um, okay. So, so you're looking for a challenge of the highs up there. Is that uh, why the yeah. circle's up there? Well, that's that's a possibility. Now that it's going to take something pretty crazy for that to happen, like, like a massive yeah. risk off, bear move right. in, in equities. Something surprising, yes, yeah, something yeah. kind of shock to the system. I honestly, I wouldn't be. Uh, I think there's probably 10, 15 percent we see that. So I'm not saying that it's like yeah. minuscule. I think it, it could happen, but in the meantime, I'm thinking about 
Uh, we'll see what it does with 134 in the 10-year note. Okay. This is the futures, by the way. Right. Um, right. If it breaks above 134, I think we're probably looking at 135, 136, and then we'll okay. see see how that goes. Are those Bowley bands you're using there? Uh, they are, yeah, just some oh, Bollinger bands. Okay, and then with the moving average, uh, um, when bands pinch together, mm -hmm. um, and it looks like that's what's going to happen here, they begin to compress. Have you noticed right. that the first move out of compressed Bowley bands, the first breakout is usually a fake out? Um. Yeah, I would say the major. Yeah, I would say sometimes it, each market has slightly different characteristics, but a lot of times it'll uh, give you fake outs two or three times before it yeah. actually does anything. So you want to be yeah. careful. I mean, some people get, uh, I think Bollinger Grand bands are a great tool, but you want to, like you mentioned, if they get compressed, like if we see up in this general area up here, yeah. you want to be really careful. Some people just uh, get lazy and think that it's automatically a buyer or sell at the band, but that's when it's that tight, it could break out yeah. huge in either direction, like we saw here. So you don't want to yeah. compress um, volatility. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just be okay. careful. Um, and we use them a lot to just kind of get an idea on what options might like, for example, here, you probably want to be a net option buyer. I mean, that would be the general goal. Um, when things are wild like this and that option seller, we were helping clients do a lot of covered calls where they basically go long futures and then sell calls against it because the calls were pretty expensive. Even though the market was in a downtrend, the options were overpriced because of volatility. So that's been something that'll work when the bands are wide and volatility are high, assuming you're not completely wrong. That's, but if you are have- Are you doing it, you, you know, know this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you and I have some history. So remember when the chant on the CBOT floor was beans in the teens? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was like, that would be a phenomenal thing. Now they, you know, they trade there forever. I, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm wondering what, uh, you know, that would have been, uh, uh, that was a great run in, in uh, it was. brains. Uh, I mean, yeah. one of the biggest runs I've seen in my career. And yeah. now we've had this pullback. Uh, are you viewing uh, this pullback as a buying opportunity in grains, uh, maybe, you know, $12 beans, $10 mm -hmm. beans would be good long-term positions. Um, what do you think? Sure. So you can see, uh, let me put this. Okay. they That's great. All the circles you show the temporary yeah. uh, weather markets. Was this a weather market? Uh, the, to this particular bean rally was literally kind of a combination of everything. So we were coming out of the U.S. China trade war, which had right. kind of held beans down for a while. Right. Um, we have all this government stimulus, and we so we had a lot of fresh money coming into grains, which is this. It sounds crazy, but this is literally what was happening. So people would read the Wall Street Journal or watch CNBC or Bloomberg, and they hear about inflation and oh. what's What's the advice people say? That's what Hillary inflation. Clinton did. I remember yeah. when we were talking about the 100K <laughs> she made yeah. in cattle. Yeah. And and she said, they asked her how she was able to do it. And she said she read a uh, Wall Street <laughs> Journal article. <laughs> hey, it must, it probably worked for people here because literally everyone wanted to buy be in commodities. They didn't yeah. care what they were buying. They didn't care about price. They just needed money in commodities because that's what they thought was going to hedge inflation. And uh, at least in the short run, it probably worked. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, I talked to a lot of people that had allocated money to corn and plus there's ETFs now that kind of yeah. exaggerate this. So like there's a corn ETF where, you know, people that have no idea that they're trading the animal feed cord, they think they're buying like the corn they buy in the grocery store, but they put yeah. money in and then that fund has to put money in the futures. And then it literally right. just kind of self-fulfilling prophecy we start to see. Um, and then we'd also on, in addition to all those things, we also had weather concerns. And so it's literally just been the perfect storm. Um, I'm in the short run. I think that the grains probably have one more run in them because we're, you know, there's just a lot of uncertainties out there, weather, you know, changes all the time, that sort of thing. So I do think that we have another run in them, but this is a, obviously you can see, this is a chart that goes back about 20 years. Grains can have very magnificent and stunning rallies, but they they just don't hold. They haven't yet. Maybe this time will be yeah. different, but I doubt it. They generally don't, um, especially if we see the dollar continue higher, which I ultimately think will be the case. I think it's going to be really hard for the grains to hold these highs. Okay. Uh, bear market rally in the dollar, maybe 
the Dixie to 95 or, you know, there are a lot of people that have been extreme dollar bulls for a long time that think that, uh, you know, the dollar could trade, mm -hmm. you know, 107, 110, 120, um, and, you know, and mm -hmm. that would be a catalyst for another deflationary move in right. everything. I mean, the dollar affects everything, doesn't it? It's this it fulcrum does. of the wheel. It does. And, you know, it doesn't get a lot of enough credit for that. A lot of people always want to make up stories and um, yeah. crude oil or what. I mean, if you literally pull up a chart of crude oil and the dollar, you can see there it's just like a, the negative correlation is is insane. So all these stories we make up to say that crude oil is going higher or lower because of this sometimes or can just simply be explained by the dollar is up or the dollar's down. So it's, yeah. it's interesting, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not like of the, I we've been bullish the dollar for quite a while um, last several months. And I think that this is probably just the beginning. I'm not looking for 120, but I think that we re, I think we have a pretty good chance of returning up to um, maybe not 105, but 100. So I'm thinking okay. somewhere in this ballpark is uh, where we If we're we going. broke out over 100, then we could have really a huge squeeze on dollar bears. Because um, I oh, mean, the yeah. whole world's bearish a dollar because, you know, what the Fed has been doing and fiscal, right. what's happening yes. fiscally. There is not, you right. know, I, I've asked people, give me a bullish argument for the dollar besides technically. Can you right. do that? Give me a bullish argument for the dollar. Um, so, so one reason that we have been favoring the dollar is, well, first of all, I tend to, if everybody thinks one thing, I tend to think the opposite. Yeah. Sometimes that works for me. Sometimes it really works <laughs> against me, but that's just how my brain works. Yeah. So every, like you just mentioned, everyone and their dog has been bearish the dollar. And that to me is a sign that everyone that's bearish has probably already acted that sort of right. thing. But the one, the one fundamental driver that I was have been looking at is um, like to us, we look at the 10 year note and we think that, well, I mean, it's the yields are lower now, but when yields were 1.6, 1.7 in the 10 year note to us, we think that's low, but if you look at everywhere overseas, that's actually yeah. extremely high. And so we've okay. been looking for money to flow um, from, you know, investors overseas that are getting negative yields or, or, basically breaking even on 10 year uh, bonds, yeah. put their so money in the U S and make a couple percent. That's not a ton of money, but if you're looking for safety, there's, that's a big interest rate differential that I thought would help the dollar. Okay. And that's probably also supportive of uh, dollar denominated assets. Do you think, uh, I know your stance in bonds, do uh, mm -hmm. you have any kind of stance in S and P after last week? So I've, I've been uh, bearish the S&P for several weeks, maybe even a couple of months now. And on it, obviously that just hasn't been. Uh, I have been just, for about uh, uh, 10 years. Yeah. I mean, it just hasn't worked okay. out yet. But All this right. is the monthly chart that I keep going back to. And I keep thinking, what in the heck is going on? I mean, this is really completely crazy. So like uh, back in March when we were just yeah. selling everything and throwing the baby out with bad bathwater, obviously... Um, that was irrational fear. And then we were thinking somewhere around 37, 3,800 was probably irrational exuberance. And then it just, it just kept going yeah. at the very minimum. I think we should see a test of like this area to kind of test this trend line 30. So that we're talking like 38, 50 ish, 3,800, I think would okay. be a healthy correction. Back and then to we'll the see. megaphone line, huh? Yeah. Right. Okay. But uh, I mean, definitely the, I got to admit, I've, I've been wrong. I really underestimated the rally. It just overshot what I thought. was. Yeah. Possible. Well, the, uh, you know, there've been, look at all the divergences you've had in, in yeah. years. We're still not confirming. Right. So I, I, I think yeah. this is a 1 billionth uh, non-confirmation <laughs> <laughs> in the S and P's Carly. Right. Uh, I know. I hear so, you. So Carly, you know, uh, I'm really glad that I reached out to you on Twitter. And um, uh, is there any kind of option strategy you would uh, execute in either the dollar or mm -hmm. S&Ps up here? Um, okay. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So in the in the dollar, there the options market on the dollar is pathetic. So you really can't do much in the, with the dollar index. You're either long or you're short or you're not. The nice thing is it's an index. So it's kind of diversified in itself and it doesn't move that quickly. The dollar features right. is tame compared to most. Right. Or you could you could trade the euro instead, which is going to be kind of the same thing. So you could basically go short the euro 
if you wanted to be a little more aggressive, you could go short the euro and then maybe sell a put under the market. Um, but I would prefer, honestly, I think just buy a dollar index future. And then if if it's a little lofty now because we've had such a big runoff, so you want to right. keep it real small here. Um, Do you scale yeah. into positions to get scale your toe in, in the yeah. water? Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, you wouldn't want anything big on here because we've had such a big run, uh, but the idea would be on pullbacks, uh, kind of scale it. I th I'm a big fan of scaling just because nobody, you're never going to hit the high or the low ever. So you might as well, you know, uh, kind of average. And even if you do, yeah. that's the exception, not the rule. Exactly. Right. Because so once in a while, I, you know, I know that's happened to you over uh, the course of your career, Carly, that sometimes you sometimes hit things you on the button yeah. and you have no heat, no drawdown, but, you know, yeah. uh, and the foolish thing is to expect to be able to do that right. half the time. Um, yeah. Right. I can't. It never happens. Yeah, yeah. me neither. It, it never happens. So in the S&P, one thing that um, the idea that we have is to, I mean, um, probably would have been better a few weeks ago to do this, but I still think it's a great, great idea. So you could basically go short a futures contract and then sell an at the money put. Um, you'd, you'd bring in like, if you sell a September put, it has like roughly 90 days. Yeah. You, uh, you bring in like 130 points. So let's say that you sell, where are we like uh, 4175 ish? Is that where we are? Anyway, yeah. basically you sell here and you can be over the next three months as long as, long as the market is below uh, 4300, you don't lose money. The only way for you to lose money is if it's above 4300 because the premium that you collect on the short put is hedging your upside risk. If the market drops, um, you're giving up some profit potential. The most you can make is 130 points, but shoot, that's a lot of money for, yeah, for one, yeah. a one lot like that. And honestly, even if you're not right or wrong, let's say that three months from now, the market's exactly at 4174, you still keep the 130 points you collected, which is like, um, what is that? That's like 6,500 bucks. Okay. Well, Carly, you're an options uh, trader. You ever hear this expression? that options are like relationships, 90% of them expire worthless? I have not heard that, but I like it. Okay, well, I thought I'd share that. <laughs> I might Jaded use that. outlook on life that I used to have. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Carly, uh, uh, why don't you show people your website sure. and okay. the best way to get a hold of you for people that are interested in your strategies. And um, I, I know that uh, I could tell that, you know, especially since commodities are in vogue, uh, here we go. Find out what DeCarly Trading can do for you. And sure. uh, so, DeCarlyTrading.com, go ahead, tell the people is, yeah. about what you do. Okay, so it's DeCarlyTrading.com. We are a brokerage service. We're a boutique brokerage service. So we're basically, we're not any, well, we are different than like TD Ameritrade or IB, or I'm not calling any of them out or bad mouthing them. I'm just saying we offer the same services, only they're extremely enhanced. So for example, um, with us, you can trade futures and options on futures online on a trading platform. We have about 30 platforms to choose from, or you can trade with us broker assisted, meaning that you can talk to someone, they can hold your hand, they can help you. Um, we answer our phones, we answer our emails, we do this for a living. We only deal in futures and options. So we know we don't, want, we don't know everything. We don't know where the market's going, but as far as like logistics and getting things set up and uh, basic questions, we can answer them right off the bat. If, you if you've tried trading with some of the bigger shops, they'll probably put you on hold and pass you around 10 times and still can't answer your question. So um, okay. that's what we do. Okay. Well, thank you. It was great meeting you and hearing thank you. you. Um, and you're now my trading warrior sister. All right, perfect. Accepted. And <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate uh, your, you know, your views and your experience, Carly. Um, I'm glad I reached out to you. And thank you. I think that we should do this again down the road. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. Thanks for having me. All right. So everyone, uh, that's a wrap. You know where to find um, Carly at the Carly Trading, and that's also your Twitter handle again. Carly it is. is yep. Okay. At the Carly Trading, you could find her on Twitter and uh, really appreciate you taking time out of your day and your giving spirit to Thank come you. here and share ideas with us. Sure. Absolutely. 
All right, everyone. So that's a wrap. So whether or not you're going to do something in bonds or something in the dollar, don't count, just count those, uh, your bond, bearer bond certificates, count your blessings, and we'll see everyone tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday. You could join the team for Morning Edge in 13 minutes. Adios. And thanks again, Carly. Get her book, they're saying. Okay. There's a nice recommendation for Carly's book. <laughs>